Come on. Help, my torch is broken. I was really hoping to start today off with some fire, whatever. I got this thing just for emergencies. Oh boy, the butane fuel stays on. Well, we made it another week, collectively, all of us. We survived, we survived. Hot potato balls, we survived. Potato baths, we're nice and clean. We've been bathed. How do you feel? It's time for more. There hasn't been enough. So here's more of just everything. Life, every time I wake up after doing it the day before. So um, I bought a lot of potatoes, <laughs> like, like a lot. Maybe too many. Worry not, they won't be going to waste. Well, they'll be going to this waste, but you know, I'll be cooking them in the house. Uh, today, tomorrow, maybe next week, possibly the week after that. The week after that, oh, I'm busy that way. The week after that though, I'm back. I'm gonna be cooking maybe the week after that. What's the shelf life of these? I'm just kidding, we won't do that uh, yet. Anyway, I'm cooking more potatoes today and I'm excited because this is a very, very new and kind of niche recipe that I'm making today. It's like, basically it's, I think, a Japanese take on potato preparation. One of many, I'm sure. Uh, and it is called potato mochi, okay? You might've heard of mochi, the ice cream. I had it as a kid. We would get it at Trader Joe's. Very Americanized version of something that uh, probably has a really interesting history behind it that now is gonna be applied to potatoes. But basically we're gonna be shaping our cooked potatoes into some sort of little circle. And then it's gonna have the consistency of like almost like a doughy, it, it, it looks like a rice ball, but it's made of potato. And we're gonna cook it and we're gonna coat it in the nori and then we're gonna sauce it and then we're gonna toss it into our mouth. And then I don't know what happens after that. I haven't planned it. There's too much. All right, I didn't get the itinerary ready for today. Yet another one of the foods that I put in the category of what is it? Which to be fair, it's not bad. It's just it's just me not knowing things, which is, is common. I'm used to that feeling. And if you watch me, you're probably used to me not knowing things too. Now we can not know things together, but at the end of this video, we'll know things. Like for instance, how the potato tasted in a, in a mochi form. Did I burn myself? How many places on my body did I get burned? Did I almost cause a fire hazard? Are there food markings on the wall? For this recipe, you're gonna need some kind of unusual ingredients for potato preparations. I'm gonna say it. You're gonna need some soy sauce. You're gonna need some mirin. You're gonna need some, yes sir. Sake, and listen, okay, we're cooking with this, but I'm gonna have a little, I don't know, a little hair of the dog. Had a couple of drinks last night. If you haven't heard of it, it's pretty interesting. I looked it up on Wikipedia. The concept is you take a little bit of the poison and then you're less poisoned. So if you had a night of poisoning yourself, the next morning, just take a shot of poison and it'll counteract the effects of the poison. Germans call it a counter beer to counteract the effects of beer with beer. I love knowledge. Anyway, you're gonna need sake to cook this recipe. You need sugar. You're gonna need some potato starch. You're gonna need some milk. I put my oat milk in a shot glass because I'm a grown ass man and I have a shot glass and a carton of oat milk. You're gonna need some vegan butter. We're gonna use the leftovers from previous potato recipes. Oh yeah, nori. I'm all in. And you're gonna need butane fuel or an oven in your home. Or if you don't have an oven in your home, just knock on your neighbor's door and ask them if you could borrow their fire for a little bit. They'll know what it means. Oh, and then of course you're gonna need two Yukon gold potatoes. Today I'm practicing a new behavior called don't cook so many fucking potatoes at once. But let's make some potato mochi. Put some in our mouth, put some in our pocket, toss a couple in the old fanny pack, throw one across the room. Time to have Pinterest tell us what to do. Pinterest, do your thing. Uh, first step, this is actually uh, maybe kind of unique or unfamiliar potato preparation at the beginning of this recipe that I'm used to, which is microwaving potatoes. Usually uh, we're doing some sort of mashed potatoes to like create whatever, you know, dough mixture we're making. Uh, but for this recipe, and I've looked up multiple different iterations of this and all of them say microwave the potatoes. So I'm just gonna follow that even though it's a little bit unconventional and I, you know, whatever, I'm listening to the recipe. I am the student, teach me. But we're gonna take these two Yukon Golds, we're gonna wrap them in a damp paper towel and microwave at 600 watts. Bro, I don't know how watts work. I'm just gonna toss them into the, the magic little tiny apartment in my kitchen and press the buttons. I'm gonna do this 
damp paper towel in a little microwave safe bowl. And it says five minutes. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna send them. Three hundred seconds. Wait, no, I almost did 3000 seconds. Those, it would have been a different recipe at that point. Anyway, in the meantime, we have to prepare our sauce. So let's do that. All right. For the sauce, we are gonna be adding uh, two tablespoons of soy sauce, gluten-free tamari. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, that was not sexy. Okay, come on, get it together, sugar. Uh, we're gonna do a tablespoon of mirin or rice vinegar. And then we do a tablespoon of sake, which is like, okay, why are you measuring it in tablespoons? Okay, just give me a shot of the damn stuff. A little hair of the dog. Hair of the dog, give me that damn dog. Hold on, let me pull up my favorite Wikipedia page. In Japan, the equivalent phrase to hair of the dog is mukuzake, which can literally be translated as alcohol for facing or greeting the next day. So, mukuzake is how we're gonna be treating this sake. We're gonna do uh, a, 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 a tablespoon, kenpai, all right. Now an actual tablespoon to measure. Oh, that tastes good. All right, sauce, I believe, is ready to go. Yeah, sauce is done. Time to whisk. Okay, sauce is done. Looks pretty good, looks saucy. Smells good. I love Japanese food, okay? I love sushi. I love the flavor profiles of Asian food in general, but specifically like sushi preparation style foods with the sauces, the nori. I even keep one of these things on me at all times. This is some vegan QP mayo. I literally have this thing. I keep this thing on me, okay? You just never know when you're gonna need some QP mayo. You want some? So I'm very excited about potato mochi because I have high, ho high hopes for, for the way this is gonna go. How much time we have left? Oh, I wish I could ask my microwave questions. You combine a Google Home and a microwave. Hey Google, microwave this for 30 seconds. You're useless. Anyway, maybe I'll, for my next Shark Tank appearance, I'll try to get them to invest in my Google Home microwave. Cause I feel like voice activated microwave is both safe and effective. Well, I hope that was 600 watts. I'm not sure if it was, but uh, now we have to wait till they're cooled. Ha, it's hot. My eyes are up here. Okay, so potatoes, they look microwaved. Okay, the knife goes in pretty easily. I think that means they're, they're good. So I'm gonna use this paring knife uh, to just kind of scrape off the potato skins because it's gonna come off easily because they're cooked basically. Then we're gonna mix in our potato starch, our oat milk, and we're gonna kind of make the dough. I think we use our hands to actually mix it, so we really should wait till it cools. Uh, in the meantime, I think we can cut the nori pieces. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it by hand. Wait, is this the right? Oh, no, it looked much better in the video when they did it like that. Is this the right shape? I don't know. Oh, I did it. Let's go, perfect. This might be the wrong shape though. Let's try it again. This is just arts and crafts with nori now. I feel comfortable using nori in recipes and preparing it, because my mom, when we were younger, like taught us how to make sushi. And it would, always, it would always like blow all of our friends' minds. They'd be like, wait, you make sushi? Yeah, my mom taught us. So shouts out mom, my Aries mom, teaching a little white boy how to make sushi at a young age. So now I know how to fold nori. Life is crazy, you know? My eyes are up here. You know what? I think this, this recipe more than anything is gonna just look really nice. I think the final product is just gonna be pretty, pretty fancy looking. Pretty Pinterest, you know? All right, there we go. All right, so we, we used our time wisely, okay, while the potatoes were cooling, so that's good. Nori is cut, and now let's grab these potatoes that are definitely too hot to handle. Fuck, that's hot. You just gotta do it really fast. Ha, ah, ah, it's hot. I thought we allowed it to cool. Why is it still hot? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna uh, be right back. For no reason. Potatoes have been properly skinned. Uh, I definitely waited an appropriate amount of time until you know, they were cool enough to handle. And now we're gonna take a good old fashioned masher and just, uh, we're not getting fancy with the ricer today. I feel like I just wanna follow these kind of unconventional 
potato instructions exactly by the recipe just so that, you know, we're doing the recipe as they want. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just following instructions. I'm really good at it too. So I'm just mashing, a little bit of mash action, not too much. That should do it. Okay. Okay, so we are gonna now kind of put together our mochi ball. So we're gonna add the potato starch. Okay, this part I think we use our hands for. So we're just starching up the potatoes a little bit. And then I think we use the, the milk to kind of bind them together maybe. Mix in the potato starch and non-dairy milk little by little. I did it all at once, just do a little milk. Oh, I see the milk definitely helps the texture stick together. That's nice. Probably won't even need the full amount of milk. Looks like it's already sticking pretty good. And I don't want to ruin this texture by making everything so wet. I'm kind of surprised that we're not salting this, but I think we're not salting the dough because the sauce that we have at the end ends up being pretty salty because of the soy sauce. All right, so this <laughs> looks familiar. You know what I'm saying? But we can't do that because this is our entire amount right here. So we need to shape this into, it says eight, but I feel like we're only gonna have four. We have the proper amount of potatoes now, sort of. I mean, I think I could probably do with a little bit more, but you know, I'm not cooking for a giant family of five. I'm cooking for me. Yes, I would eat a hundred of these probably. I already know that. Even if they're just mediocre, I probably would. That doesn't mean I have to. Anyway, we have our potato balls, our uncooked mochi ready to go. And now we need to get our cooktop out. And our pan. I'm gonna heat it behind me while I prep this. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of vegetable oil. I think it said you want a decent amount of oil because you don't want them submerged, you're not deep frying them, but you also want uh, like full coverage. Anyway, while we wait for the oil to heat up. Little hair of the dog. This glass is perfectly straight, by the way. So worry, worry not. Hmm. Ah, yes. Hair of the dog. I'm gonna grab my new cutting board that arrived recently sent and created with love with an Aries Kitchen engraving by the lovely Evan and Caitlin. I love those two so much and they're so talented and they made me a cutting board for cooking and cutting. Shouts out Evan and Caitlin, they're wonderful and now I have a cutting board because of them. Okay, let's turn this on. Yes, sir, we're cooking now. This is kind of what we're working with here. They're like little pillows, little potato pillows. All right, so I'm gonna put them Flat in the pan, and we have to cook until golden brown on both sides. You know, just moving them around so they're not sticking. All right, this is looking great. It's looking wonderful. I'm excited. This, we're cooking things in hot oil, baby. This is my happy place. All right. This is looking absolutely stunning. I'm like blown away with how aesthetic these guys are. Oh my God, I just got hot oil on everything. Oh my God, that could have been bad. But for real, look at this close up shot right here. Sheesh, that is nice. Speaking of hot oil, I'm gonna lower the burner and we're gonna drain the oil into this little cup. That looks like a cactus. Okay, so the oil is basically gone. Now we're gonna introduce the sauce. This is the important part, okay? This is where it's gonna get its flavor. Here we go. Yes, sir. So the sauce is bubbling. It should start to thicken up. You know, take it off the heat, walk around, do a little dance, kind of give them a nice little coating. Yes, sir. Ooh, that tastes good. This is such a fun preparation. I saw them cooking with chopsticks in the video, so I'm just trying to, you know, do it like they're doing it. I'm trying to be like them, look all cool and stuff. But this looks, these look really cool and delicious. But the sauce is um, completely thickening up now. The mochis are completely coated. I think it's time to cut the heat. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little precise. <sighs> That's really hot. Yeah, I'm gonna try it this way. I'm gonna try to lay it down on top of the nori and then fold over the top. There we go. That's looking good. We're cooking now, we got the strap down and the nori is just sticking onto these pieces because it's coated in sticky sauce. Everything's working out. 
All right, time for the, the presentation. You know what I mean? Time to make these puppies pop. They are hot still, very hot. A lot of heat. That's hot oil too. Oh boy. Oh, hot oil spilled everywhere. You know something, okay? I'm just in here trying to cook a meal. I didn't even really do anything. Chaos just finds me. It just finds me. Well, these look uh, delectable. They look delectable. I like, I'm so proud of how they came out, whether or not they taste good, which they're gonna taste good, but they just look great. Presentation is part of this thing, you know? Okay, I'm not sure, but it might be the moment of truth. It might be time to try these beautiful potato mochis. Um, this is, it's still pretty hot, but it's not like burning my hand when I hold it. So I'm gonna take a little bite, see how it is. <sighs> I'm nervous. New flavor profile unlocked. I cannot believe what that tastes like. This is now the second episode of making potatoes where I'm underestimating the amount of seasoning we're putting on the inside of like the potato dough, only to just be like shell shocked by how good it tastes at the end. This is so good. That is so good. The edges outside, the coating of the potato is like slightly crispy. The inside is soft and chewy. The sauce is perfectly strong enough to where the whole outside is coated with it. And when you take a bite, it just welcomes you in and says, have a seat, okay? There's enough to go around. And then you're just greeted by this like warm pillowy filling. Oh my God, this is so good. I'm gonna eat all these. I have to try it. I have to try some Kewpie mayo, some wasabi baby. What do you think about that? Is that too much? Bro, bro, this is so good. This does not have any business tasting this good. It doesn't make sense. It's just potato. And it's honestly an easy recipe. You know what? 10 out of 10 for the way they tell you to cook this. Toss them puppies in the microwave, rip the skin off, get mashing and cook it. It's like, it's like they just cut out all the nonsense, make it delicious, make it easy to cook. What are we here for? We're here to eat, okay? I'm not here to spend needless amount of time with a potato ricer i mean who even has that thing time for you to take a bite okay take a bite here you go here you go i mean look at that oh it's just it's actually like stunning the way it looks oh i'm so proud of this one s tier s tier potatoes s tier this shot up the rankings all the way to the top s tier potatoes i can't handle a flavor profile like this without rating it s tier it's like it's too good the nori is perfect it adds a little bit of crunch big big massive stand of potato mochis okay i'm making a stand account today also bonus points for cooking with alcohol. So you can have a little hair of the dog, you know? Anyway, what a freaking success this was, you know? Just a full on success. Here's, this is my preferred delivery method of potato mochi, okay? A little sake in a cup. You do two cheers, okay? The first one, cheers the sake. Second one, cheers the mochi. I need a chaser. <gasps> anyway, I'm gonna spend the rest of my day eating potato mochi and thinking about what to do with this piping hot oil. A lot of options there. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed watching me cook this brand new recipe and absolutely nail it, by the way. Didn't even spill a little bit of oil. I'll see you next week or not. I don't know what you're doing next week. Are you busy? Wanna hang out? My mom says we can make potato mochi. I forgot to wash my hands.